After I made my video on the HSTVL and War Thunder, some people were wondering if I could talk about its history and development. I'll take any opportunity I can to talk more about it, so here we are. Since the HSTV wasn't the final product of its development cycle, I won't be talking about it exclusively, but it will be focused on pretty heavily. Anyway, let's jump into it. While the Cold War was in full swing, it was generally accepted that high explosive anti-tank shells and fin stabilized Sabo ammunition made armor largely irrelevant. It was proposed that, through speed and agility, tanks could increase their chances of surviving on the battlefield. In order to explore this concept, DARPA initiated a study called the Armored Combat Vehicle Technology Program, or ACVT, in 1972. It wasn't until 1975 that a test vehicle for the program was approved for construction. The vehicle would weigh around 25 to 40 tons, have a hydro pneumatic suspension system, and a high velocity heavy autocannon. In 1976, the National Water Lift Company began construction on the vehicle, what was now designated the High Mobility Agility Vehicle, or HIMAG for short. The HIMAG had two possible configurations a turretless version to test mobility and agility, and a turreted version to test the complete vehicle. Though the second version was primarily used to test the gun handling and fire control equipment, the HIMAG was powered by the same 1500 horsepower diesel used on the XM1 GM, the AVCR1360. Its hydro pneumatic suspension was fully adjustable, and was found to improve both mobility and the overall service life of suspension components. The cannon tested on the HIMAG was a 75mm Ares autocannon, later designated as the XM274. The HIMAG underwent testing up until 1981. After that, it was assigned to TACOM, and used for several miscellaneous programs. Another test vehicle was commissioned as part of the ACTV program in 1977. Titled the High Survivability Test Vehicle Lightweight, or HSTVL, two companies submitted proposals for its construction. AAI Corporation proposed having the 75mm in a cleft turret configuration, while Pacific Car and Foundry proposed having the 75mm in an elevating mount, along with a 25mm Bushmaster cannon. AAI's proposal would have a gas turbine engine and hydro pneumatic suspension, contrasting Pacific Car and Foundry's design, which would have had a diesel engine and torsion bar suspension. AAI Corporation's design was eventually chosen, but Pacific Car and Foundry would later go on to work on the Elk testbed. The finished HSTVL is fairly compact, being roughly 19 feet long and 8 feet tall. Weighing in at 20 tons with its applique armor and test equipment installed, the HSTV was powered by a 650 horsepower gas turbine engine, giving it a power to weight ratio of roughly 32 horsepower per ton. Its top speed on road was around 84 km an hour. Thanks to its high power to weight ratio, hydro pneumatic suspension, and low ground pressure, it can be assumed that the HSTV was fast off road as well, though no figures exist for its off road mobility. Unlike the HIMAG, the HSTV suspension wasn't adjustable. The HSTV had three crew members a commander, gunner, and driver. The commander was placed in the turret, while the gunner and driver were located in the hull. The HSTV's armament consisted of the Ares autocannon and two 7.62mm machine guns one coaxial with the main gun, and one on the commander's cupola. The 75mm had a rotating breech mechanism, which was fed by a 6-round carousel. After the cannon fired, the breech rotated so it was in line with the carousel. The new round was then rammed into the chamber, pushing the spent casing out the other end of the breech. This allowed the cannon to be fired rapidly, with a maximum firing rate of about 100 rounds per minute. During testing, the HSTV held 26 rounds for the main gun, though this could be increased to 60 rounds fairly easily. Due to the fact that the HSTV was designed primarily to test fire control equipment, the systems that it possessed were very impressive. The horizontal and vertical turret drives could both traverse at 57 degrees per second. For comparison, the M1 Abrams had a maximum traverse rate of roughly 40 degrees per second. The gun was capable of depressing 17 degrees to the front, 30 to the sides, and 6 to the rear. The gun could also elevate to 45 degrees, which when combined with HEVT ammunition, would have allowed the HSTV to engage airborne targets. The HSTV possessed two sites, one for the gunner and one for the commander. Each site had dual axis stabilization, thermal imaging, and TV imaging. The gunner site was also outfitted with a CO2 laser rangefinder. The commander could designate a target for the gunner, after which, the gunner could choose to automatically put the gun into the target. Any of the three crew members could control the gun, while both whole crew members could drive. The HSTV saw testing until at least 1983. Since it was a test vehicle, not a prototype, it was never put into service. The HSTV's bid for service came in the form of the RDFLT. As AAI's bid in the Mobile Protected Gun System program, the RDFLT was essentially an HSTVL with a two man crew, torsion bar suspension, and a 350 horsepower diesel. The diesel was likely chosen because the turbine limited the HSTV's range. The new diesel power pack was attached to rails so it could easily slide out the back of the vehicle, allowing the crew to easily access the engine for maintenance or replacement. The new engine traded performance for enhanced range giving the RDFLT a power to weight ratio of 26 horsepower per ton, and a top speed of 64 kilometers an hour. Since the Ares autocannon was classified technology, 
An export version with the 76mm M32 cannon was developed. Unfortunately for AAI, the RDFLT was not accepted for the MPGS program, nor was the export version ever sold, as far as I'm aware. While the HSTVL was certainly very impressive on paper, the Ares Autocannon was deemed insufficient for future armor threats. A 90mm version was proposed, but I don't believe it was ever constructed. If the HSTV had ever been accepted for service in some form, it likely would have been fairly expensive. And that's pretty much all there is to say. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.